welcome everybody. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. If you could just let me know in the comments that I am coming in audible, that would just make my day. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get chat. Perfect. Thank you so much. So welcome to Thursday's uh, training. So before we jump in, I'm just going to let you know kind of what you ex can expect. So today we are going to go over how to utilize uh, contacts, actually manage your contact information, just all of the features associated with contact management. This is the lifeline of your business. It's your number one asset are the contacts that you have on your email list in your contact database. So what we want to do is make sure that we're leveraging that functionality to its um, fullest. All right, so with that, we're going to get started. And then if you do have any questions, we will follow up our training with open office hours. And this is not limited just to the topic at hand. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me relative to your travel business or contact management, feel free to stick around right directly after the tra training and we will start our open office hours. All right, with that, let's get started. All right, let me... Um, how many contacts are you all generally managing? So when I first started in my travel business, you know, I, I knew that I needed to get contacts. I knew that I needed to grow an email list, but I didn't really know how to manage the contact data, so to speak. Obviously, I was very concerned about making sure that I had the necessary information, so to speak, for contacts when it came to them actually traveling. But beyond that, I really didn't have an idea what to do with the contacts, like how to manage them, how to stay engaged with them, all of that. And so what we really want to do is not only get the contact, but we want to also make sure that we're segmenting them. We're keeping really important information about the contacts available to us so that when we want to market to them in the future, or we want to group other people who are, have similar characteristics as them, we're able to find them. So with that, let's get started and let me share my screen and show you. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to walk you through the entire functionality that's available inside of Travel Pro Suite when it comes to contacts so that you can use it. Our, um, are we doing context or calendar today? I think we're supposed to be doing the calendar feature today. Hold on. I'm all confused. Let me see what our message is. I think it's contacts, right? Hold on. It may be calendars, <laughs> but I'm ready to talk to you guys about contacts, aren't I? Hold on. I'm going to check. I think it's calendars today, not contacts. What'd you guys come here for? That's so funny. Calendars. <laughs> so we're supposed to be talking about calendars. I think we talk about contacts next week. So let me reset. We're going to be talking about calendars. So how many of you guys are booking appointments? So I have actually tried a slew of different uh, appointment booking products. I've used Calendly. I've used Acuity. I've used Google Native. I've used... Um, I'm trying to think what other calendar. I think there was another one, Book 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 Me Now calendar um, um, software. And so, listen. The objective of your calendar. I'm so sorry. I'm a little thrown off. All right. So, full transparency. I've not been feeling well the last couple of days, and I get uh, I get I went to the doctor and I just got the results and I have COVID. So it just explains why I feel like like the dump. So forgive me about the confusion today. We're going to talk about calendars. And how many of you guys are booking appointments? Do you guys do discovery calls with your prospective clients? Do you do follow-up calls? Are you coordinating the schedule to try and say, okay, are you available at 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock? What are you doing when it comes to booking appointments? And what I want to do in this training is make sure that you guys are fully utilizing the calendar feature. And if you are a subscriber to Travel Pro Suite and you do have another software to manage your calendar, we want to allow you to eliminate that software. That is one of the other software pieces that we can eliminate inside of your travel business. So I'm going to get to the right feature 
and make sure I'm sharing that. And then let me thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to need it. I am. I'm not like discombobulated, but I do like the right side. I'm not altogether feeling great on the right side of my body. All right. So calendars, how many of you guys are using a calendar system? For me, if it's not on my calendar, as you can see, I think this is pulling in my actual live calendar. So this is what my live calendar looks like. What are you using for your calendar system? How do you book appointments now? Google. All right. So Google is really good. That's what I use for our business. Um, so all like what you're seeing right here in terms of the calendar um, invitations that are on my, um, my calendar, I use Google business. So it's integrated with my Google business. If you use Microsoft um, 360, if you're using the business version of that, that's great. If you have a iPhone and you've got an iCalendar, we can integrate with that too. Right. Primarily what I'm really talking about when it comes to the calendar feature in your business is do you book appointments with prospects or with existing clients? And if you do that, do you automate that process? Do you just give them a booking link and then they book themselves or do you actually physically coordinate the calendar invitation or the meeting so that you can get it on your calendar? When I first started, I, I mean, I am a certified project manager, so calendar and appointments are what I've been living by for the last 25 years of my life. So the thought of having to manually book an appointment on a regular basis with all leads just scares me a bit because you spend a lot of time just trying to go back and forth to get on someone's calendar. So Tabitha, you said that you do it um, manual. So someone says, I'd like to meet with you. You're probably texting back and forth. What time is good? Is this time good for you? What day is good? And you're doing that back and forth. Now, don't get me wrong. I do do manual bookings, but for the most part, I do give somebody a booking link. I schedule my availability or, or make myself available for certain windows of booking, and then people will book their own time. So you use a scheduling link. All right, perfect, Maria. What are you using to book uh, to utilize that link. What software are you using for your scheduling link? Square. All right. So Square has functionality. I remember years ago, I think we used uh, Wix when we had our barbershop and we used the appointment scheduling feature within Wix. I don't know if that's native, but for Wix, it was an additional charge to have that appointment booking component. So let's get to explain understanding the feature set of the calendar feature. So the first thing is, is when you onboard, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make sure that we set up the two calendars that we have available for you. We get those set up for you. And so let me go to the settings because the two calendars out of the box that we have available to you all, what we've set up is a discovery call calendar, and then we've set up a discovery call follow-up. And the reason we create separate calendars for separate uh, calendar or event types is so that we can build automation around it. So for the discovery call, when we have a prospect, let's say we have somebody who's interested in getting a travel quote or us designing travel for them, we want them to book a discovery call immediately after they fill out our survey. And then our discovery call follow-up is used directly after we have the proposal ready for them. We walk through the proposal with them so that they can do that. Now, the beauty of a calendar is that you can create any type of calendar that you want. Let's say you are hosting a, um, an event and you want to register people into that event. You can use a calendar for that as well. So we're going to actually create a new calendar because I'm going to actually show you from scratch how you create a calendar in the system. Now, out of the box, when you become a subscriber to Travel Pro Suite, we will load these two calendars in. But let's create a new calendar. I'm going to explain to you these different types of calendars that are available to you. For travel advisors, most likely you're going to be doing the round robin calendar, but I'm going to explain each of those. This software that we've built Travel Pro Suite on really can handle any industry. And so what you'll see are different types of calendar types. 
the ones that are most applicable to travel advisors are going to be the round robin and potentially the class booking may be a calendar type that you're interested in. So I would use this if you're ever doing an event and you want to um, handle registrations, you could do a class booking, which is a specific day and time, a number of people that you want to be um, in at the event when they book into this calendar type, what will happen is they will in, enter into um, appointment automation. There's appointment automation that I'm going to show you. So let's just set set up. You could use the simple calendar, but for the, like I said, for the most use cases that travel advisors have, I you would want to select the round robin or the class booking. And we're going to select the round robin and you're going to give it a name and so you can call it whatever you want i've got travel advisors that are using the system and just travel advisors that i know in general who will create maybe a special um calendar for let's say they're they they've got a signature group and they're going to africa that seems to be one of the hottest destinations right now in temperature and in interest is they'll do a calendar specific specific to um, a destination and this calendar they want dedicated just for this destination. You can do it by class. You can do a generic calendar. So I'm just going to call this a test calendar. And then you can add a description for your calendar. That calendar description will become visible when somebody actually books into it. So we're just going to call this our test calendar for training and then you want to select members and so these are staff members so people who are staff in your um, business that will actually be conducting um, any appointment so traditionally it will be the owner of the travel business but if you do have let's say advisors that work in your travel business and they will be taking appointments, you can select multiple people. So I'm going to select myself. I'm going to select my admin here. And what this is going to allow, again, a user, one of your clients is they'll be able round Robin means that it takes turns in terms of who gets access to the booking. So let's say you've got a couple of people who are trying to get into this calendar. It'll pick me, then it'll pick Jam. It'll pick me, then it'll pick Jam. So it just goes into what's referred to as a round robin selection of how it assigns the calendar invite to them. Probably not as in, um, critical for you if you're a one person shop, but if you do have additional staff members that are helping support the business and will be hosting calendar or hosting appointments, you'll want to make sure that you have multiple, that all of the people who will be able to take appointments there. And then you can give it a unique name. I'm just going to call this test calendar. And then you'll give it a length, a duration. So we'll just keep this at 30 minutes, but you can set the appointment for as long as you want. And then on the availability, that is the booking window that someone can book the calendar invitation to. So we generally book appointments only, you only can book appointments Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, unless you're a private coaching client, then I leave my Mondays and Fridays available. But traditional, any calendar that I have, it's only three days a week, and it's usually three to five, because that's when I'm available for appointments. So you may want to set up that sort of cadence for yourself, because although booking and seeing clients is important, what you don't want to do is you don't, if you don't necessarily like doing appointments, you don't want to make yourself available 24 hours a day or 12 days. Like I'll have clients who are like, I'm going to make myself eight to five. Well, do you really want to take appointments eight to five? Or do you really want to collapse the calendar, um, your booking window to a short window so that they will stack up as opposed to being sporadic? There is nothing more disruptive than having a calendar appointment at eight o'clock and then one at six o'clock, right? Because your, your brain has to shift in terms of, you know, showing up, like just getting into the appointment mood. So I like to batch my work and I like to make sure that all of my appointments are in a window 
because mentally I'm prepared for that. And then I don't have this sort of large range of availability that people can book so that I can really have block time. So that's just a little tidbit there. So if you want to just make your calendar, it, again, no, no restriction on the system in terms of what you can do in terms of your availability. But like I said, I just like to block my time and I don't like it to be all, all day long. Even trainings, like I only do trainings at certain periods of the day because it just, it's a different type of energy that you have to show up for. So I'm just going to make myself available three to five. And then since these are all selected these days, it'll apply this three to five to that. We do have the ability to accept payments directly from a booking. So if you ever have a booking that you want someone to pay before you actually schedule, you could turn the accept payments on. You could set the amount for that a booking. So let's say our design is 250 and we, before someone can even schedule, we want them to pay for the appointment. You can do that here. Out of the box, what we do is we actually have our system where we cut, we do the appointment first and then we cut an invoice based on how the appointment went. We don't make them pay up front. So we actually conduct the appointment. But if that's your process, you want them to pay up front, you could just check that um, accept payments. Any calendar can accept payments. And then on the advanced settings, this is going to just take you to the rest of the setup. And so I think I did it and it didn't, uh, it didn't keep all of my stuff. So actually I guess it did. So we've got our title here and then these are the two people who can, since I am connected here, it already brought in the calendar um, that or the appointment method that I use my calendar. We have Zoom integrated with our calendar. So the Zoom is already here, but we also integrate with Google Meet and then you could do a phone. And if you were doing full, like if you were doing face to face appointments and I do have some advisors that actually meet their clients in person, you could put an address here for what it is. Now you do want to make sure that you've selected something for this option. If even if it's phone, you want to identify is the person going to call you or are you going to call them? You want to make sure that you select it. We do it Zoom because it's just another less thing that we have to worry about. The Zoom link automatically goes out with the calendar item and the meeting location is come um, it leverages the Zoom. That also works the same with Google Meet. You can then select your colors if you want for your calendar, and that's really an internal thing, so it'll show up. I've got multiple calendars showing up in my calendar view, so I like to color code so I know what is personal, like my doctor's appointments, you know, uh, business, or anything else. All right, availability we've already talked about, but I do want to talk about some of these settings so that you're clear about the different settings that you can see on the system. Meeting interval is how long you're going to actually do the meeting. I'm sorry, that's actually not. Um, reflects the amount of time between booking slots. I'm sorry. So this is, let's say the meeting we've set this, I'm going to change this to 30 minutes. The next meeting could be directly after that first 30 minute block, or you can allow there to be just a little bit of a buffer. I tend to talk a lot <laughs> in meetings. So I usually have a 15 minute buffer or like if you're taking meetings back to back, it also will allow there to be some time in between the interval between the meetings. And actually that's buffer time, but that's actually, let's say it's zero, zero o'clock to uh, 1030. Then the next window, if you don't have a buff, an interval, the next available slot will be 1030. But if you put a buffer, that buffer will be 15 minutes. So the next available would be 1045. Does that make sense? Like that's really what the interval, I always get the buffer and the interval. Can. So let's read what the instructions say. Each hour, the interval should be one hour for a 30 minute event should be available. Every 30 minutes interval should be 30 minutes. So we're going to do this 30 minutes because the interval time will be 30 minutes. So this needs to be the match of the duration. Scheduling notice. So this is how much notice that somebody can give you before they book. At minimum, 
someone can book a day in advance, but I never like somebody booking the same day. Cause again, I need to get in the mental space, right? If I've already blocked off my Tuesday and somebody sees my thing and then they block me on Tuesday, then I got to stop what I'm doing, rearrange my schedule. When my schedule is already set for Tuesday, that happens Sunday night because I've already scheduled my whole week. So the max, the minimum or maximum minimum, I think is what I'm trying to say. The soonest someone can book me is the next day. They can never book me same day. So you may want to also have your maximum schedule noting notice to be one day, or if you need two days, right? The, the, the quickest thing they can schedule you is one day, two days, or however many days that you set. You can also set this to hours, weeks, and months. Typically, I don't see us doing weeks and months, but maybe, you know, there's been times that when, um, when I first started in my online business, travel business and, and online coaching, I did at least a four hour block. Like no one could book like because I was running ads one year and I was running a, I had a book, a book appointment funnel and people were booking me and it was like 15 minutes away and I'm out like at the grocery store. So definitely a four hour block if that's something that you're wanting to do. So I usually, the least amount would have been a half a day notice, but like I said, now it's definitely one day notice. Date range is really important because particularly when it comes to like prospect appointment booking, if somebody is booking a discovery call with you or an information session call, I don't want them to book 30, 40, six months out. I only want them to book out about seven days. And the reason why that is, is there's a psychology about that. If people book too far in advance, they have a tendency not to remember and whatever excited them no longer excites them anymore and then they don't show up. So I usually put a seven day maximum range so they can only book out as far as seven days in advance. Maximum booking per day is really a personal, how many book appointments do you wanna take? I personally, again, I am a bit of an introvert, four appointments a day is about max I can take. So I usually set this at four. If I'm in a heavy promotion cycle and we're promoting a lot of trips or a lot of services that uh, particular week or month, I may up that to five. I think the most amount of appointments I've ever done is six in a day. And I'm telling you, it's all day. Like I'm spent when I'm doing an all day booking like that. So maximum booking, per day, maybe you'll want to set that. If three is your max, four is your max, whatever that is, that's personal. Maximum bookings per slot, per user, one is going to be pretty much the setting that you're going to want to do there. And then pre-buffer time, this is before the appointment, post-buffer is after the appointment. So again, this is where I was talking, like I am a bit of a talker. So I usually don't have a minimum or an upper and a lower buffer. I usually just do the back end buffer, which is the post. So I usually will do about 15 minutes. So that usually gives me about 15 minute cushion room just in case the appointment runs over. All right. And then your thank you message. Uh, so here you have the ability to define what you want to collect for your appointment. So we have some pre-designed forms here. Typically for a appointment, we're just collecting their first name, last name, email, and phone note, phone and any notes. But if you want to add some additional fields, you can do that. Or you can design a form specifically for your appointment. Like let's say you have questions, survey questions that you want to ask somebody beforehand. You can do that here as well. So you can design a survey first and then ask them the questions before they book the appointment. This is a consent waiver. If you're collecting phone number, you wanna have some sort of consent language so that they can consent to receiving text message. You can toggle this add guest on because this will then allow them to um, add a person to the appointment. You have the option of just having a thank you message here or actually sending somebody to another URL page or a site page so that the person can go to a thank you or confirmation page. 
we typically on appointments, we send people to a redirected page. And if you do that, you just need to put the URL here. The reason that we do that is because we usually have a page that has a video on it that thanks them, gives them next steps. Maybe we invite them to a Facebook group or a community. So we just like to have that sort of real estate to have to tell them and nurture them a little bit more. So if you do not want them to go to a thank you page, you can just have a message and this is the message that will pop up. If you have any sort of pixels like Facebook, you can put your pixel ID and then when somebody books an appointment, it'll register the booked appointment event. I think it's an appointment event. You can auto confirm new calendar meetings. So this means that when somebody books your appointment, it'll automatically confirm. If you toggle that off, what will happen is, is that you will still need, you'll get an appointment that will show in as a request, and then you'll need to manually go in and confirm it. I like to just have everything automatic as much as I can automatic. And then again, I mentioned if you'd like to take payments, you can select the payment, set, select the amount, and then put the description that's going to show up on the payment. You can test the payment option, so you can keep it in test mode until you're ready to turn it on live. So once you create the appointment calendar, you can then turn it in test and then test to make sure that it's working the way that you want it and then turn it on live. Notifications and additional options. Here, I'm going to start at the top. This will be just an acknowledgement email that will just let people know that they, that yes, we've received your appointment booking. Thank you. It'll have their confirmation and appointment details in the email. You can identify who will receive the notification. I typically like to have the um, contact and if they have a guest and the assigned user, the assigned user is going to be you because you're the person who's going to actually get the assigned appointment. And then if you have additional uh, emails that you want to add in terms of getting the notification, let's say you have an admin who's going to do that, you can add their email address here as well. I typically do not let Google send out my reminder notifications because we have automate, we have, um, appointment automation email series that already is set up. So I don't want them getting an email from Google and then also getting an email from me as well. So we don't typically turn that on. But if you do want to turn it on, you just have to toggle it there and you're going to get a native email from Google or Outlook that is a reminder here. So this option assigned contacts to their respective calendar team members each time an appointment is booked. This will, if one of the things that we have when someone comes into the system is a, we automatically assign, we have an automate, automation built in that automatically assigns a person. And it's usually the owner of the business to any contact that comes in. This just says that the, as the person is assigned to a person that's who the appointment's going to get booked with so we'll check that and then skip assigning contact if the contact already has an assignment we're going to check that too so let's say we have three people and the round robin i'm next in the round robin but it's already assigned to jam with the round what this feature is doing is it's not going to assign it to me it's going to skip me and it's going to automatically assign it to jam because she's already assigned to the contact so i like having this feature checked as well you i like having the allow rescheduling of meeting because when the notice goes out to the client when we send out the automations they can reschedule the appointment but if you don't want them to reschedule and you want them to contact you directly you can um, toggle that off and then this you can set this to be let's say they can't reschedule this is really good for like heavy service provider um, industries we're not that type of industry so you can let that be 30 minutes or an hour um, before the appointment they have they can reschedule before that time and then you can also allow them to cancel the meeting as well and that link will be available in the email automation that's there and then you can set the same thing. They can't cancel up. They can cancel up to 60 minutes or 30 minutes before the appointment. I typically leave this blank because my appointments aren't, um, they are usually pre-sales appointments. So they're not tied directly to 
when we had a, a barber shop, it was like you you couldn't cancel until you had 24 hours. Uh, all right. And then you notice in this additional notes, we're bringing in these links. So when the email goes out to the client, it's going to automatically have the cancellation link. It's going to have the reschedule link, and that's going to be a part of that. And then on the customization, you can change the colors. So you can change the buttons to be whatever color you want. You can put your brand colors here. I typically, because we use uh, different descriptions, um, such as duration, time, and recurring details, you can toggle any of these features off. I usually keep them on. And then I'm going to just save this just because I like to save things. And then we're going to actually see what the widget looks like once it's done. I'm going to go back and edit that and just show you that you can select the widget. Um, you can preview it. So we were right here in customization. This is the widget here, and then we can preview what it looks like. And so this is what, so you see the description comes up here. My calendar doesn't have any availability, so it's not going to bring that up. So what would happen, but you see, I didn't put in an amount here, but if my availability was set and available, it would then show slots for availability. And then you can set the time zone too, but this is pulling in my time zone. So, but when a person, let's say I'm in Eastern and somebody is in Pacific, it will look at Pacific, their availability, but translate that for the availability that I've set for Eastern. So it automatically will do that. So that's what the preview looks like. So one of the things that you'll need to do once you are done with your calendar is you'll want to and then um, let me just refresh this. I think I can computer. All right, so now that we've got the calendar, one of the things that we um, can do here is since we finished it, it activated it, but you can always deactivate a calendar. So let's say you want to retire the calendar, you can deactivate it. Click save. And then you see that the status is dropped. And then you can just go in here and you can um, uh, activate it again. You can share the calendar. This is where you get the links for the calendar. So I typically share the permanent link. So if I ever change the, the slug or the URL, this permanent link, if I've put it in emails or buttons or anything like that, doesn't matter if I ever change this, this link will always be constant. So you can use the link. You can also get a one-time link that is only available for one time. But typically what we do in our calendars on our pages are, um, let's say we have a booking page, we will embed the code so that the calendar just appears right there on a sales page or a uh, funnel page, any sort of site page. We'll just copy this code and embed the calendar on our, our website pages, our funnel pages. You also have the ability to create a group. So if you have, we have, like we do pre-sales, we have event calendars. And so you can create a group and then assign a calendar to a group. We have a group already. I think it's our request group. And that's where those two calendars reside. You can have an unlimited number of groups and um, set up people, you know, set up calendars for those groups. That is pretty much the calendar feature. And then I'm going to go back. This is the actual setup. Then I'm going to go back to the main menu and then go to calendars. And then we've already in the settings, we've integrated our Google and our personal um, calendars so that, again, this is from the perspective of the user of your system. So if you have staff members, they may have their calendar integrated and it'll see the, this calendar. So I'm not really sure why I keep spinning like this. I'm just going to refresh my screen. Always when I'm sharing, there's always a bit of a. All right. So now my calendar showing up. So this will show the calendars. You can do a day view. 
you can um, do a month view as well. So it's going to be very similar to any of the calendars that you're accustomed with. So you can see what you, this is again, my personal calendar and all that's on my calendar. And so then, you know, you can schedule as far out as you want. You can also see a month view. And what I always tell people is if you want to block your time off, just block off your personal calendar. It's already integrated with it. And then when you block off your personal calendar, it won't let people block time for you in that space. Then um, the other, this is your preferences. And so this will then bring you back to the list of calendars that you have. So there's really two ways that you can view. You can go into the settings feature and then go to calendars and then you can go actually in the main main area and go to calendars. The calendars on the main left-hand menu are really your calendar and how it integrates with the uh, calendars that you've set up to be done. All right, I'm going to check chat and see if there's any questions. If not, we um, it was a pleasure showing you this feature and then we're going to go straight to office hours um, from here. And so if you are watching us on um, YouTube and you'd like to join us, you can just join us inside of the Zoom room. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com.